Good morning. I'm Mark Magleby, and I'm honored to share the podium with these illustrious visitors from other museums represent, representing the, uh, the venues that will host Beauty and Belief in the coming days. We welcome uh, Katie Haig and Bruce Gunther and Mary Sue Sweeney Price, uh, who have traveled a long way and, and have put forth much effort to be here. Um, I'm also uh, moved by, to, whenever I'm in the presence of Sabiha, to hear her uh, explanations of the significance and the relevance of Islamic art to a modern audience today. And, and I feel it, and I think that you will feel it as you, as you see more, and that our audiences will feel it in the, in the finished exhibition. I appreciate the, the remarks that Stephen has made today, and I would like to acknowledge his role and, and that of a man who should be here on the podium with us, uh, Ed Lind, who is the acting director of the museum during the uh, inter period between uh, the time that Campbell left and the time that I'll take, uh, take on that role full time. Uh, I appreciate very much their work in keeping this going and keeping the, um, and, and in preparing this show and their efforts to this show. I also feel like I have to uh, acknowledge the incomparable MOA staff who is taking on uh, simultaneously not just one show but many exhibitions all at once, including Beauty and Belief and, it, and, and its unusual, and unusual demands in being 100% uh, borrowed from other institutions. Uh, Stephen mentioned the, four, the, the 40 institutions and, and the, uh, and, and the uh, 10 countries that we're, that we're borrowing from. And that is, uh, it, there, there is so much that has been done by curatorial, education, registration, design, fabrication, and the administrative uh, factions of the, of the museum. We appreciate so much their work. I'd like to um, invite uh, all of the press who are here today to be sure that you stop downstairs as well and see the Weir Show, an, a, an exhibition that, uh, that also just opened, that is a powerful show and a great example of the kind of scholarly curation that goes on here in the museum. I have been tutored by Sabia. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, I didn't realize I would step into this role when I heard the first presentation that Sabia made in my presence at BYU. And I, and I latched on to this bridge metaphor that she uses. It is, uh, it is not presenting Islamic art for its own sake. It is presenting Islamic art as a connection and a bridge builder between cultures. I can't see the screens, but I think you might, there might be an image of a, of a bridge up. Do you see that? That, that bridge uh, is the Colbrookdale Bridge in England, and it's one of the first manifestations of prefabricated iron construction in the Industrial Revolution. It was a precursor to trains and train stations and skyscrapers. It is the beginning of a lot of things that we associate with modernity and modern life. It is a utilitarian object, and it's a beautiful object. It has a certain kind of geometric symmetry to it, and it has an absolute effectivity of its function. The bridge can be both efficient and beautiful simultaneously. I've heard Sabia expand upon this notion in terms of the most humble and the most masterful Islamic pieces of art, and I think you'll find as you look at the illustrations that are here today and come back to the exhibition that each of these works work in that way. I had the privilege of following Sabiha around in our, in our skeletal galleries the other day as she was working with the team that is working on the virtual support for the exhibition. I could see her striving for balance to achieve just the right amount of technology to support and, as she would say, give voice to the otherwise mute objects that will be displayed. And the adjustments that she made made it clear that there will be no technology used for its own sake, but only to expand the view and expand the notion and the concept of each work that is there. I appreciate this very much, where I have been to, I have been to exhibitions where I longed for more, where I longed for more context, longed for, longed to, for the ability on, my, with, on a subject that I was naive about, to uh, have greater access, to get a leg up onto the subject. Beauty and Belief will be a successful exhibition 
with, a, with an audience from sea to shining sea in four time zones across the United States. It will be a success because it has been made so accessible by Sabia and her marvelous team. I have been a latecomer to this project, and, uh, and in trying to catch up, I have been leafing through the descriptions and images of the, of the uh, 250 plus works that are, that are, that have become so articulate in, uh, in laying out the principles of beauty and belief. Um, a, a valued staff member uh, of ours was recently at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, she and her husband walking through the newly hung, newly installed Islamic galleries. And in that setting, they said to each other, who could wage war on the creators of this kind of work? And who, who, who wouldn't think that this kind of imagery and functionality and objecthood doesn't prompt peace? I thought that was a very insightful comment. I feel the same way as I have looked at these. There's one, there's one example uh, a, uh, that I'd like to touch on just briefly as I close. Beautiful object, an incense burner. Can you see it? An incense burner that is, that is created out of metal, streamlined, sinuous, uh, stylized, and yet naturalistic, instantly recognizable as a mother bird, how I a mother bird, two little chicks, two little uh, uh, babies attached to the wings uh, of the bird. It is, uh, it is a, a daily used object. It was created both for uh, functionality and constant use as well as a reminder of the beauty of God's creation of the, uh, and maybe of the pr protective role of a parent. As I looked at that, I thought, this is not a symbol. This, this nurturing mother, the chick with her hands, is not a symbol that is unique to Islam. It extends, I, I think, in a very fairly universal way. I immediately thought of the New Testament analogy to, uh, to the Savior's um, parable of, of God gathering his children like a, a hen would gather her chicks under her wings. And as I anticipate the messages that will come forward from, from beauty belief. I believe that in every venue, in every location, people of all cultures and all faiths will recognize harbingers of, of future good, future opportunities, interfaith, intercultural, and also recognize resonances of their own cultural experience and beliefs. Thank you very much.